Liberty coach has been busy. <laughs> Another beautiful coach hot off the press. Yeah, we just got this coach in, what, today is Thursday. It just showed up here on Saturday. So yeah, we're moving right along here. Well, it's always an honor to come see the latest and greatest here at Liberty Coach. And before we take a look at the newest Liberty Coach, I've noticed this is possibly your best pre-owned inventory I've ever seen here at Liberty Coach. Some real nice units available. Is there anything in particular uh, that we could uh, share with the folks? Well, we've got a 2017 quad slide. We've got a 2000. Uh, 17 double slide, we have a 14 double slide, we've got a 16 triple slide inside the showroom here. Probably now that we've got inventory coming back after not having it for so long, it's, it's really cool to see that everything that we have in the showroom and outside is going to be 13s and newer, which is the Dean Laux era starting, if you will. So it's really cool to see all the different designs and how things have evolved. It's really cool. Yeah, definitely some incredible machines here, but this is the latest and greatest here. So what is the story on Liberty Coach 905? Uh, well, 905 happens to be this client's 11th coach of ours. They started out in Bluebirds many years ago, then got into their first Liberty in the mid 80s. So we're really proud to have this client for this many coaches in this many years. And each one of them that we have done has been a custom unit to them. It's really great that they trust us enough to, to keep you know, keeping us on our game, if you will, and keeping us on our toes, so it's really cool. Uh, do you think we could take more of a look around this coach? Sure, absolutely, let's cool. do it. The first thing that I want to point out right here is this little light right here in the door handle. Yep. You mentioned that's something that this owner wanted done for their coach? Yeah, they did. They had it on their previous coach, which is the 2020, which, by the way, is a fantastic coach coming in on trade. That was on that coach as well, and then added to this coach also. So it's a cool feature, especially in the evening or at night when it's on. It really gives the coach a different look. Yeah, and talking about lighting too, we've got the underglow lighting yep. on as well right now. Lots of different lighting here, but what's going on in the bays up front here? Well, in the first bay here, it's pretty well standard of what we've done with the slide out tray that goes fully across the coach. So you've got storage all the way across. This bay is configured just a little bit differently. This cabinet's a little bigger because the, the grill unit is actually in this drawer here because this third bay here changed slightly. And then we've got an electric a slide out uh, here on the floor of the second bay passenger side. So this again was a, a repeat from their previous coach as well. So this is kind of cool. Then we have the TV here, obviously still as well, the big 65 inch unicorn. You know, you always pull this out, but I just want to feel it. It's kind of like opening the door on a Rolls Royce here, just so smooth. And I've even heard other, you know, RV manufacturers just talk about how the TV lift on the Liberty coach is just another level. This is something that we do build in-house. Uh, we have a locking mechanism on there as well for different positions, so if it's windy outside, you can still use it. Once again, every part of this in here is something that we manufacture in-house, so we get a nice, clean, smooth device here, and it goes into the pocket, which doesn't take up too much room in the rest of the coach. A third bay here on the uh, passenger side. Did an ice maker here outside and refrigerator unit iPad down here as opposed to doing the Crestron panel. So you have full control walking around of the entire coach plus the exterior. Uh, you have storage drawers here as well. Storage drawer here and a little compartment for you know, if you want liquor, or whatever you want to put in here. And then we come into the fourth bay here. This one's going to have the rollout toolbox. We've seen a few of those that we've done here in the past. Uh, we did uh, the drop downs here as opposed to drawers. So get a little bit more accessibility possibly than doing the drawers. A little bit more better usage of the storage there. And then we come into the fifth bay on the passenger side. Wet bay, which is the same that we do traditionally in all of our coaches. So we have the reverse osmosis system here. Here. We've got water pump, the 40 gallon electric water heater. We've got the stainless steel fresh water tank, the aluminum holding tank, both of those, the capacity is right around 170 gallons. And of course, we also have the tankless water heater for the shower valve. Now that, again, is being used only if your water heater goes down. That would be your backup for the shower. Uh, we have the ability to dump the coach on the holding tank on both sides. And then we have the ability to have fresh water, city water inlet on both sides of the coach as well. Right. And, and the largest holding tanks in the industry, yep. uh, it was a 180? Uh, 170. 170, yep. yes sir. So then one thing we kind of 
passed over or glanced over, I apologize, is that we have the ability to fuel the coach uh, over here on the passenger side as well. We have 200 gallons of fuel, so we can fuel the coach here on the passenger side as well as on the driver's side. Driver's side is deaf and fuel. This is fuel only on this side. And these are locking doors as well. One of the questions a lot of folks have been asking that we haven't done in a few of the previous videos is show how the awnings are. Yeah, so these are the, uh, the zip D awnings. Uh, is there a reason that Liberty Coach chooses to work with zip D? Yeah, because the package for us is not as tall. But also, it's structurally, when you see it come out, it's very strong. There's no question about the integrity of it. Uh, we've been using zip D since the first time we ever put awnings on a coach going back into the 70s, for crying out loud. So, <laughs> you know, it's been a long, good relationship that we've had with them. So when they started coming with the two-stage unit, we jumped right on that as well and help them you know do the uh, uh, initial design work and and help through some of the things that were going on with those one way or another but they've worked out to be really good units for us yes sir and this being a triple slide i've got to point out how much under shade area yep. we have with these huge awnings and even with the the rear slide out i mean you still have several feet of space yep. and you were talking about the structure of this i've never noticed that big beam about four feet off of the coach if you look at other awnings they don't have that kind of structure. Correct. And the other thing is, too, when you see awnings on our coaches that are six, seven years old, the fabric is still structurally good, you know, as opposed to the other awnings that you see that out there, they all get all frayed and ripply and they don't go in properly. They get crooked because they're sagged out from, you know, age, sun, what have you. This has been a very, very good package for us. Now, you don't have to bring them all the way out. You know, you can stage them at different positions as well. The other part of what Liberty Coach does that our, most of the other competitors don't do is we have this identical system on the driver's side of the coach also. You know, some manufacturers only do the big awnings here on the passenger side, which is the typical side that you use, and they kind of cheat it on the driver's side. They don't go full out, they don't go full length, but you have the identical system on the driver's side of a Liberty as the passenger side. Yeah, there's so many features in these Liberty coaches and we only have so much time to show them off. So sometimes we do miss some of these features, but mm -hmm. Frank does read the comments. So if there's something that you guys wanna see, please drop a comment. Absolutely. We'll try to uh, show you as much as we can, yeah. but really looks awesome with the bat wing awnings. What's going on back here in the back of the coach? Well, on the driver's side back in here, we've got the electric fan system, which has been phenomenal that Prevo started doing on the 2019 shells which is going to end up being our 2020 model chassis which again the coach that's coming in on trade on this unit does have that feature also this is of course Dean Lauchs's paint job uh, this is kind of a little bit different with a little lavender put into it, it was the first time we've ever seen that color thrown into the mix and it's really pulled off, pulled off really really well so we're pretty impressed with that so is the client They're, they love it yeah so really a good. head turner yeah and then talking about lighting back here the rear end yeah. of this coach is just so well lit what type of lighting do you use on the back of the coach? Uh, well, it's an LED. The tubes are the LED as well. They're concealed really well and they are positioned properly so they do have the effect that you're seeing here. So Volvo D13, 500 horsepower, 1850 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, this one has the stainless steel belt guard on it. So we have the two 10,000 kW alternators here that run for the Volta system to charge that back. So you got 20 kW of power going back into the 58 volt uh, lithium ion system. This has the air belt tightening system as well, which keeps these belts over here on the passenger side at a constant tension. And the belts that are running in here are on a spring pulley mechanism. So they're constantly at the same tension as well. You know, one thing that we do talk about a lot is the serviceability of the Prevo chassis. You know, over a hundred years of experience building chassis, millions and millions of miles per year that the units are on. I mean, Prevo today is building between three to four units a day. So, I mean, they have a huge amount of experience underneath them for the serviceability because they listen to the operators, they listen to the owners. These types of features have evolved over many years. Uh, this is something you're not going to find on your Class A chassis. You won't find on any other chassis that's out in the marketplace, without yeah. a doubt. 
yes, there's a lot of value in that Prevo shell. Now, a question that I don't think I've ever asked you that I think a lot of people are wondering, we see the elegant lady badging here <laughs> on the mud flaps, and we see different elegant lady markings, and, and I know some of the older coaches were classic, some were elegant ladies. Where did the term elegant lady come from, and what exactly does that mean? That actually came from my mom. So she developed that term, and then we had the Liberty Lady Classic, which at the time, uh, those were units that were primarily their house systems were 12 volt operated, and the Elegant Lady then was a step above that, and the interiors were a step above, so then we transitioned those to be the 24 volt house systems with the programmable logic controllers. That goes all the way back to the early 90s. So that's how that all evolved. And then we just got to the point that everybody was coming in and adding features to the classics that just made them all pretty much elegant ladies except for the house voltage system. So we, at one point, quit doing the classic and then just transitioned everything into the elegant lady stage. A very cool story. I'd never yeah. heard that. And what a perfect name to uh, describe these beautiful buses as well. I got to tip my hat to your mom for that. Yeah, thank so. you. One thing that we uh, miss a, few, a little bit here and there, this is one of the radar units for for the blind spot detection system. So there's three of those devices down the side of the coach. One here, what we would call midship, there's one driver side rear, there's also one up on the front corner, and those are on both sides of the coach. The nice thing about that system is that these devices do not get upset by snow, they don't get upset by mud, they don't get upset by being wet. They are a really, really precise unit, so you will get detection of the indicators on the windshield posts on a vehicle that's right up against or within a lane of the side of the coach as well as about 20 feet back. So it does indicate and does give the, another safety feature to the, to the coach. It also is another design feature that Dean has to do and his team because the paint and then the metallics that go on here have to be extremely thin so it does not upset the uh, the radar capabilities of the unit. It's just incredible that there's, this is what's referred to as a drop shadow with a slight fade in it, and then there's an image ghosted, and that all goes through this little sensor. The amount of work it takes to make that line up perfectly is mm. just incredible. No one out there is doing it to the level that Dean Laux no. is. No question. And, and I've got to point out something on these wheels as oh, we yeah. were getting some rolling shots. These do have the floating center yep. caps like the Rolls yep. Royces, we're 904, they opted for a different wheel package, yep. but is this something we're gonna be seeing on a lot of the new Liberties? All the 24s that have the Alcoa wheels have those on there, and also, if they've opted for the American Racing wheels from WheelPro, the chrome ones that they do, or the polished aluminum, those will fit on there as well. So, the only ones we don't have the option on that is on the black ones, so. I love the rolling center caps, and Liberty Coach is the only one I've seen doing that yep. so far. Yep. So, and real quick, one question about the blind spot monitoring system. Is this factory from Prevo or does no, no, Liberty no. Coach? That's Liberty Coach. Exclusive Liberty Coach. We started that on Coach 865, which would have been our first 21 model year coach. So all of the 21s had it. 22s, obviously 23s, 24s. Coming here to the fifth bay on the driver's side, again, the wet bay, the polished st stainless steel fresh water tank, the polished stainless steel cap that's on the aluminum holding tank, the trademark polished copper, which we know we've seen many coaches that have been 25, 30 years old and it looks brand new in those. Uh, we have the 100 foot hose reel. This is electric retractable. It's manual on the way out. The dump valve, uh, you go with the hose through the floor here. This device then goes over to be able to keep all the critters from coming up inside the coach and like so, driving down the road to keep all the dirt from coming up as well. Uh, the sewer hoses are stored here. We have a hose washout with a hand sprayer and then we also have a, an option here on this coach is a hose bib so they can hook a hose onto here and use the filtered water from the coach. If they wanted to wash the coach down, knock the bugs off the front, whatever. So nice. it's just an added benefit there. We also have an electric valve that's press button here for washing out the holding tank. So that's a nice feature as well. Plus you have the ability if everything fails, you can fill the fresh water tank manually here or you can flush the holding tank through this bung here. Yes, sir. I just want to make sure I heard you correct. You said you just press a button to wash the holding tank. Uh -huh. I think other coaches I've seen, you've got to kind of hook up and kind of manually wash yeah. it. Does that just do it off of the water pump? Yeah, off the water pump itself. And how long has Liberty Coach been doing that? On the electric valve to do that, we always had a manual valve for it, and then we switched it over to electric, I believe, in the 23 model year. So this will be going on our second year doing it with the electric. Prior to that, it was a manual valve. 
Very cool. I learn something new every time I hang out with you. That's why we appreciate all those comments because we got to get as much information out of Frank as possible. So thank you guys for the comments. This is the uh, diesel tank fill for the driver's side. You have a locking door here. You've got the fuel fill on top and the def down below. Again, I point this out. This is really comfortable. It's easy to do this. It's a big nozzle here. So the big diesel fuel nozzle at the truck stop goes in here and you can run that bad boy wide open. You have the def next to it. So you don't have to be moving the coach to go to the back or you have to go to the front. You don't have to crawl up underneath a slide room or crawl in a bay to be able to do it. It's all very comfortable done right here. Fourth bay on the driver's side. Again, we saw this on 904 as a closet arrangement. This was done a little bit larger. So you've got a larger closet here. We didn't do the storage bins. So, you know, different configurations that we do on, on all the coaches for this particular bay. Yeah, kind of a good spot if you're using the coach for multiple seasons and maybe yep. need to store your winter clothes or summer yep. clothes. Really nice to have yep. that. This uh, particular client shows horses as well. So a lot of the jackets and the stuff that they use for show are done down in here. They keep here. Keep it nice and clean out of the coach. Exactly. Sir. So the generator compartment, the signature Liberty Coach stainless steel door for sound deadening of the generator is here. We have a 12 and a half KW Onan unit that's housed in its own a soundproof box as well. Once again, we get these coaches in on trade with these and we don't see very many hours at all. They just are not using them as much because of all the battery power we have on that 58 volt uh, Volta system. And how many years have you been using a lithium technology for now? We started doing lithium on the 2011 model coaches. So that started going into that in December of 2010. And then we transitioned all the units uh, in 11 to that. On the master volt system, that was 24 volt. And then in 2016, we played around with the Volta system. I ran a coach with that. And then we transitioned into that in 2017 model year. So the Volta system then is a started out as a 48 volt unit, then went to 58 volt, and that's where we are today. We had originally 3,500 watt inverters, three of those. We now have three 5,000 watt inverters. And two of those 5,000 watt inverters can be stacked so you can run 220 volt equipment like the washer dryer, the Mealy microwave convection oven can be run on that as well going down the road. So you're not needing to run the generator for those purposes. Yeah, so Liberty has been way ahead of the game with lithium technology. I think every class A RV over a million dollars is offering lithium as a package now. So you've got a huge head start in the learning curve to all of that and a lot of value. And I think your systems are definitely more expensive than the other systems I've seen out there. But I think the end user is going to notice a difference between this systems and other lithium systems out there. There's no question. You've got a lot more standing power when you're when you're dry camping than you do on those other systems. Uh, we can go with one air conditioner using the normal loads in the coach. You're going to be looking at 15 to 16 hours before the generator is going to start on the auto start system. If you're running two air conditioners, you're probably going to cut that almost in half. The beauty of what we have here is when you crank the main engine up at a position of 20% of charge, you can get up to 100% of charge just within two and a half hours of driving the coach down the road. So that's unheard of in the industry. Yes, sir. And, and then also you can shut the coach down if you're going to store it for four months. I don't know any other you know coach at this level that does that. So second bay here on the driver's side, uh, we were talking about being able to shut the coach down if you needed to over a period of time. That's on this box right here. So for example, if you're at 100% state of charge, you can actually turn the coach totally off on the house systems by just pressing that one button. You come back to the coach probably four months later, it's still going to be right around that 100% state of charge. It's going to probably be between somewhere around 80 to 100%. But when you turn that on, everything comes back on as a clean reboot because all the power is right there. You don't have the voltage drops as things start to turn on, which causes the things to go on and off and on and off. The other systems that you have in here, this is the basis of our house electrical system is done right in here. So so you only have six fuses in this system. The rest of it is done with electronic programmable breakers, and then those are reset via a flat panel on the Moritz Octoplex system. So the other item that we have here is the stainless steel box, which has our transfer system. So the transfer from inverter power to generator power to shore power, that's all done in this system here. The logic on those is all devised by Liberty Coach as well. And, and how long has Liberty Coach been using that Octoplex system? Uh, we started using that in 2007. So it's been a standard equipment since that. So we have a lot of units out there. It's been bulletproof for us. A lot easier for customers to troubleshoot for us 
to troubleshoot on the road. Uh, it's very easy to turn things on and off. It's very easy to figure out where a problem uh, has developed, so it's, it's, a, it's a huge bonus. And then we have the driver's side first bay, so you got a lot of storage in this bay here. Slide out tray on this side as well. Again, lots of storage, lots of height. You know, you've got higher bays than anybody else in the industry. It's easy to get in and out of. You're not having to get on your hands and knees, so it's, it's great stuff. So the 9660, one of the big changes there was in the back as far as how the coach has been shaped as far as a fairing type arrangement, and then the caps that were done front and rear that my brother did. You can notice the front cap on this one, how sleek it is, how it forms with the chassis as far as the aerodynamics of the coach. This door for serviceability changed. We used to only have a door that was from here down. Now this whole system here opens up to be able to access the Prevo service items, which would be their electrical system, the windshield washer fluid, and other items that are down inside that. Plus the ability to drop the front bumper down is from there as well. The front bumper on the 9660 changed from a single bumper to still a single piece that goes down, but three separate pieces. So if you damage a section, you're not having to replace the whole bumper cover. You can do it in independent pieces. Uh, the other thing that we ended up on the 9660 is what's called the frunk, which this comes down, this door, which accesses the windshield wiper motors. You can tell the windshields are taller on the 9660, so the windshield wipers are larger as well. They went away from a tie rod and a single motor to two synchronous motors here so that they are timed perfectly. They also have more availability as far as stages for the intermittent of the wiper. We also have the filter here for the dash blowers, so we don't have to worry about how the, the entry stairwell is designed for accessibility to that filtration system like we had on the classics. So that's easy to get to here now. Uh, the front end here changed. Kurt did a whole new design here on the front. Plus we changed the Liberty Coach placard to be lighted. This particular coach, we are now starting to see the electric mirrors. Okay, so we have the electric mirrors here as well as the standard mirrors. So this coach has both, which is what you're gonna see coming on all the units that will be coming here in the future. They'll all have both units. So if a customer decides that they really like how the electronic mirrors work, these can be removed a cap can be put in place and then you've got the electronic by itself. Yeah, very cool. And, and both sets of mirrors have a really cool style and design, a more mm. updated style and design. But I think when they go to just the electric mirrors, like we saw on 901, it takes it to another yeah, level. It totally does. No question about that. Again, front cap here, you can see the design work that my brother Kurt did on that. This is the interface cap for the awnings, front and rear. So this had to keep the profile for the fuel efficiency of the coach and then a little design treatment to it to, to help that along as well. The headlights here here are total LED units now. They're super bright. They have a nice feature in here as far as a decorative feature as well and the turn signal aspect. So it's very high class, very updated. I love the exterior of this coach is incredible, especially with these bat wing awnings out. But I'm really looking forward to seeing what your sister-in-law Kim did with the design here. You think we can take a look inside? Absolutely. Let's go. inside of this coach, very light, yeah. just incredible, the different designs your sister-in-law comes up with. Uh, do you know if there was an inspiration for this coach? Well, the inspiration was from all the coaches that this client has built with us. I mean, again, this is their 11th unit. So when we go back through and I'll look at all the different units that they've had, they've all evolved. You know, when you, we go up in the front, the dash area with the Stingray, you know, that's in there and in the seats. When you look at this couch, how the couch is upholstered, you know, that's specific to them. That's a design that they and Kim came up with together. So there's all kinds of features in here, how the fabric on the wall with the crystals on there are done. There's a, a lot of design features that they have, even down to the decor that's in here. They both had a hand in this whole whole thing. So this is 
pretty stunning. Even the, the stone on that lamp up front <laughs> ties in that exterior lavender color and you know just little details, really cool. Uh, but what else is going on here, sir? So cockpit area, this was a massive change going into the 9660 that my brother did. There was a, basically two years of design here in the dash and in the front and the rear caps. We've got like 17 or 18 different molds going through here to make this whole change. These indicators for the blind spot detection system, these are all 3D printed. These are the monitors for your e-mirrors. You've got one here on the center post, you have one here, so when you're driving down the road you can actually see what's going on just by looking straight. The upholstery part of what we do is second to none. This especially, we do this cover for the steering wheel, for the horn button, the stingray is in here as well as the leather. You look at the stitching that's done in the seats and how the stingray is inlaid in here as well. It's there's there's no comparison in the industry to what our capabilities are. The dash panels on here, these are now the lacquered panels. We've seen the carbon fiber, we've seen the matte panels. Now we're seeing the the gloss panels in here. We have the 10-inch Pioneer radio, which we can airplay from the charger base here. This clamps your phone or your Android phone into this and then charges it and then you can airplay or carplay over to this device so you've got your navigation going on here you've got the display that you can control you've got your backup cameras here as well and your 360 camera system so you have a bird's eye view of the whole exterior of the coach you have a camera that looks right down on the hitch ball we've got interior cameras in this coach also we have a separate monitor on the center pillar so we can put the cameras up here we can control the coach there's a lot of different options that that we have going on here in this cockpit to make it as comfortable and user friendly as we can for for the client we have on the 9660 you've got more air flow to the driver for the air conditioning coming right out here at the chest level or face level as well as down here at the waist the passenger has more air flow also from a vent that's at the top of the passenger dash and also down in the handrail area leveling systems changed we've got the leveling system done here it's all four positions now, driver side front, passenger side front, driver side rear, passenger side rear, are all separate leveling valves now on the 9660. So we've got a lot more flexibility on the leveling system also. The seat is air ride, most comfortable seat that you'll ever be in. We have air lumbar as well. We have cooling fans, we have heat, and we have all that availability on the passenger seat also. So there's not another cockpit in this industry that it's going to be as user friendly, as ergonomic as the Liberty Coach on the 9660. I've got to ask you, is this a real Stingray it's, material? It's Stingray material. Uh, I can imagine that's a pretty expensive option or how does, oh, that, yeah. how does that work when customers bring in these really expensive materials? Is that an a la carte deal? Or? Uh, some of it is, yes. You know, some of it is. Some of it we already know because we have done enough units for clients that we know certain things are going to be coming from past units. So, you know, we already have some of that baked in. Wow, incredible. Well, we've got the extended galley floor plan. This is a non-bath and a half, so we just have the center bathroom or toilet room. We then have the rear shower with the rear vanity. We have, again, the extended galley with the waterfall feature countertop, single chair in the living room with the desk cabinet arrangement here. That's become, again, very popular in what we're building. This overhead cabinet and the dinette overhead cabinet, notice there's no handles here. Okay, so that's a different. We've done a couple of these on and off that we've, we've manufactured. This particular unit also has dishwasher. We haven't seen that in quite a while, but this is something that this client always wants to have. Their handles that they do are always a little bit different than our norm. So these are nice. You'll see a different feature in the bedroom area for those handles that are and the hardware that's back there. The piping that's done on the upholstery on the couch and on the living room chair as well. So and the dinette stools, you know, so all of this is a lot of back and forth going on between Kim and the client, you know, to get this as perfect as, as we can, which I believe we've gotten to that point. So the flooring in here is really cool. The design, the color, 
This again is a fully heated floor. There's four separate zones here. This onyx, crystal onyx back wall that is backlighted. We've done a couple of those. This has really turned out neat with the, uh, the, the onyx color, really gives it a bright feature. So, so that's actually a stone. That's oh, yeah. a, I can imagine the, the cost oh, yeah. on that level of an option. Oh, yeah. That's probably an extra charge over no normal question. Liberty. Yeah, no okay. question. Then of course you have the framing. I mean, you know, this is all solid wood that's all polished and painted to match the rest of the coach. A lot of work in there. The features on the door panels in here. When the coach is dark and you just have this light on in the bathroom, how that translucent panel lights up is really, really amazing. We've got a little different feature here on the uh, dinette. This cabinet arrangement here, this is actually a, an Apple monitor. They do quite a bit of work in the coach as well. So that was different as far as this, just doing a TV and that cabinet arrangement, because we've seen that cabinet eliminated. All the storage underneath here, they have a lot of outlets that are in here as well, because they've got special requirements for how they do things. Printer was installed in here, specific to them also. The coffee center here, we've got the Keurig unit, plus we have an espresso unit here. So they're, they're real particular in how they want certain things done. Pantry area here, the rollouts, pretty much the same that we've been doing here on the last few coaches. You've got the Mealy convection microwave oven unit. You also have this being the Wolf inductive cooktop, a solid surface on the sink to kind of more form match the uh, countertop material. And then of course going to a colored faucet, you know, as opposed to what we have been doing, what you've seen with the chromes or the nickels or the brass or bronze, what have you. Yes, sir, and I've got to point out, I didn't even notice there was a, a cover over that cooktop because it's so flush, the way they even line up the grains in the countertop with that cover. And other motorhome manufacturers do have different countertop covers, but what is it about a Liberty Coach that makes it so flush where I, I didn't even see it? So back in the mid 80s, my brother and I invested in a CNC router. It was all computer controlled. It was a three axis machine. And now we've gone through the years to a larger machine, which is a five by 10 uh, vacuum table. This countertop actually comes on and off that machine three different times. It has the layout process that you do the original cutout with it. Then the edge is done, glued on, then it goes back on there again to get the inside radius done, as well as the cutouts for the sink cover and also the range cover. So all of this is done extremely precise. We can do well within one thousandths of an inch tolerance on that five by 12 table. So it's, it's made our manufacturing process very precise since the mid eighties, which is why our cabinetry, when you look at everything, how precise it is, we build to the periphery of the coach as well. So that's why our coaches feel larger on the interior also. We haven't touched on that in a while, but how our window surrounds are done, they fit the profile of the Prevo chassis. We just don't run a straight wall down from the ceiling to the windowsill, which then ends up bringing the interior of the coach in by almost three inches on either side. So now you're losing six inches out of the interior with your coach. So there's a lot of features that we have the ability to do with that type of machinery. Yes, sir, and we always talk about it, to, to warranty squeaks and rattles to the original owner and to keep them coming back for 11 coaches like the owners of this coach, no room for imperfections. No, there. no squeaks and rattles, warranty as long as you own the coach. Pantry area here, we have the Fisher Paykel refrigerator unit with the freezer and the freezer drawer here. Uh, we also then have the ice maker uh, in the top drawer here. Water dispenser in the door. When this is all closed up, you don't even realize it is a refrigerator. Super clean. This bathroom is pretty spectacular. I mean, there's a lot of features going on here with the brass. We've got a full makeup mirror that's set up here that's mounted, very user friendly. The different textures in here as well, the decor that's on the on the wall also. And even the the inlay on the door here, we've seen different patterns, but now is this gonna be the same firmness and solid? Oh, yeah. It almost, I'm afraid to touch no it question. because it's so no high question. end. But. Well, this is all a wood frame. We make this, manufacture this in house. So this is all a solid wood frame with this material sandwiched in. So this is somewhat translucent. So at night, you know, when you have lights on in here, it really gives it a different, different appeal. I bet. So this coming into the bedroom here, this is the super suite arrangement. So we've got the super slides here in the back of the coach. You've got the king bed here, the features, the sconces, the wall sconces are really cool. Again, a lot of input from the client and from Kim, my sister-in-law. The hardware I was mentioning before here on the doors, really a cool feature on that, as well as on the Lucite pulls that are here on these closet doors. So you've got mirror on both sides, got a little setup here for the Dyson. Safe is done 
here on this particular unit as opposed to being underneath the bed. So now we have a drawer underneath the bed where the safe is located. So every place that we can find a little bit more storage will do that. We have mirrors on both of the big closet doors here. The drawer storage that we have here, we've had people that have asked, you know, open up the drawers. Let's see how deep and how big they are. So we've got a lot of storage here in the drawers, plus drawers that are inside the closets as well. The closets that are on either side here, we ended up doing some storage back in here on both of them for shoe storage also. So you've got a lot of depth in here, so we utilize the space back there as well. Another closet over here, and I love the style on this hardware. Just such a cool little different variation than we've ever seen, and so well lit. I think the new owners are already they're putting loading their stuff, stuff up. So yeah, they're, they're, they're ready excited. to take delivery. Yes, <laughs> sir. Excited. This back wall feature here, this is pretty cool. This is a little different than we've seen in the past, as opposed to mirrors or different, you know, dimensional aspects. So this is a, a really nice uh, feature here. Yeah, and, and again, just so much texture on this wall. Just such a rich surface there. Yep, it sure is. And then we come back into here. This is the rear vanity area. We've seen this before, the big lights that we have that are in these mirrors and the drawers that we have all the way down on either side of the vanity, plus the storage underneath the vanity sink. So again, Kurt, my brother that does all the floor plan layout and design, you know, utilizes every minuscule inch that we can for storage. We've got a lot of closet storage back here as well little door here that opens up so that you have more accessibility to it plus big drawers that are back here so and then behind that is all electronic equipment for the satellite receivers this coach also has a Starlink system on it so that equipment is back there as well plus the internet access systems that are cell based also so we have redundancy on on internet access between the the Starlink unit and the cell base you know the Starlink has been really great it's been performing really well but you get into situations where you may have tree coverage or the coach may be inside of a building it's nice to have the uh, cellular backup on that yes yeah, sir definitely and i'm noticing another thing different i haven't seen shower in a while yeah a different style yep. of shower the door the shower door being obscured glass as opposed to being the clear and then we you know the tie-in of the lavender stripe on the outside of the coach and some of the decor and some of the tile that's in here to have those colors it's really cool yes sir cool. and again we talk about this on all the coaches that we do the shower is really important to us the size of it so that you know, bigger people can get in there taller people can get in the shower pan is a stainless steel pan that we manufacture we weld in house it goes in first and then the rock board goes up so when the tile gets on here there's no way that water can get out of the shower unless there's a problem with the door but as far as it getting in the walls or what have you in the chases any Anything like that it's not possible in how we build it and we've been doing it that way for 30 plus years so we just don't have that issue when you come in to use coaches you're not going to get that smell that oh there's a little moldy thing going on here it doesn't sound like it would happen but that would be covered under the absolutely. lifetime workmanship warranty absolutely. to the original owner absolutely it would there's no question about it so you don't have to worry about a shower leak if nope. you uh, buy a brand new Liberty nope not happening Yes, sir. Not happening. So washer dryer, as we entered into the uh, bedroom, we got the washer dryer here, the stack Bosch unit. Something else that's a nice feature we do, you know, eat, you don't, we don't have to do this, but because we're trying to get the most usability out of the slide length, the, we flush down in the switch panels, a lot of work here. But then again, that gives us the ability to not have to lose that much of the slide wall, if you will, because this is flushed in. Yeah, it just looks so cool. And I don't know if I've seen any other motorhome company do that. Usually the switches are gonna kind of come off of the wall a couple exactly. inches. Exactly, exactly. Well, Frank, thank you for your time as always. Now, if someone's a serious and qualified buyer and wanna purchase one of your pre-owned units or order a new Liberty Coach, what's the next steps they should take? Well, you be on the website. We're looking at uh, libertycoach.com. You can email right directly off the website. You can also uh, email in coach sales at libertycoach.com that gets to me and then I'll go ahead and move that around to the salespeople. You can call in 800-554-9877. We also have another website called the Motorhome Exchange that has equipment on it as well that may not be Liberty Coach product. If it is Liberty Coach product, it's going to be older than 10 years of production. So there's a lot of variables that we have in-house. So we're, we're more than happy to talk to anybody. We've got the Emerald product also. We've got one of those that we'll have at the Tampa Super Show. So we're pretty excited about 
about that. We haven't had one of those in inventory for a while, so that's going to be an H quad slide on the 9660, which will be the first Emerald 9660. So we're excited about that. So, you know, we've got a lot of good stuff going on here. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Also, greatly appreciate all of you out there subscribing to the channel. We hope you're all having a great day. Thanks Thank again. you, and keep the comments coming.